Hello everyone. Welcome to the practice session of PMP exam questions and answers for August. Just like the previous months, in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out, okay? I'm sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. If you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. So out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of the five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation, okay? Also, before we get the discussion started, guys, I would like to introduce you to my YouTube membership, okay? So you can join my monthly memberships using the join button on the screen or on your mobile app, whichever YouTube version you're using. So I have kept the prices extremely, extremely affordable. So there is a basic tier and there is an advanced tier of membership. And within this membership community, I give daily tips about PMP exam preparation and processes. Okay, so often over the YouTube videos, it is not possible for me to go through each and every detail and each and every tip and strategy that I'm willing to share with all of you guys. So what I have done within this membership communities is I have collated all those information in form of daily posts which you will receive if you are a part of this basic membership. And if you think that doing some one-to-one -one live stream sessions with me will be helpful for you in terms of getting your preparation up to speed or strategize with respect to whatever prep strategy you are using, with the advanced membership tier, you get access to my live doubt clearing sessions, which I hold fortnightly. So you can join those if you think that is something that you are looking for. So as I mentioned, the prices are extremely affordable. You can try it out for a few months. And if you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. Okay, that's the beauty of a subscription based model, right? Right. So question number one, guys, please pause the video, read the question and try to answer it before we take this together. Okay. So let's solve the question together. A project is halfway through when a senior developer applies for a three month sabbatical. So basically sabbatical means a prolonged holiday or a prolonged leave, which people generally take for personal reasons. Okay. What should be the first step for the project manager? Okay. And the keyword to note here in the question stem is this, the first step. Okay. So it is not asking what is the best course of action. It is asking what is the first step in this scenario for the project manager. Okay. So let's uh, try to evaluate the options one by one. Option A, negotiate for a two month sabbatical instead of three months. Okay. So this is outright incorrect, right? So on what basis you will negotiate? You first need to have uh, uh, a data to negotiate, right? Now this person can say, uh, the senior developer uh, can say that, uh, look, even three months is short for me. I would like four months if possible. Then on what basis you negotiate a two month, okay? So you need to have some data to negotiate. As of now, you do not have any data to negotiate or discuss whether uh, this uh, three month is enough or whether two month is enough or four month is enough. You are uh, up it up in the air, right? So option A is outrightly incorrect for this reason. Let's look at option B. Meet with the functional manager and ask for a replacement. All right. Okay. This is also incorrect because uh, this functional manager is basically the line manager of uh, the senior developer. Okay. So this is how a matrix organization work. So the senior developer has a dotted line reporting to you as the project manager and has uh, the primary or let's say the line management reporting to the functional manager. Now you can go to the functional manager and ask for a replacement, but option B is incorrect primarily because of two reasons. Okay. Firstly, meeting with the functional manager would be treated as an escalation. Uh, and we have talked in multiple uh, question and answer sessions now over the last one, one and a half years that you do not escalate unless it is absolutely necessary, right? So that is something which you should be avoiding as a project manager in terms of a PMP style question or a PMP style scenario, right? Secondly, again, the functional manager uh, would uh, like to ask you the question that, okay, show me the data or show me the reasoning why you are saying that you need a replacement, why you cannot manage 
with a three month sabbatical why you cannot manage with one of your senior developers not being present show me the data probably you have more senior developers in team and the functional manager thinks that uh, those senior developers are enough for you to manage the project right so on what basis uh, you will like put forward your argument that okay this senior developer going on a three month sabbatical is something which the project cannot withstand right so for these two reasons so the first line of reasoning is more due to a principle based decision because you do not escalate unless it is absolutely necessary and the second line of reasoning is more from a factual point of view that you do not have enough facts to corroborate or let's say support your uh, argument that you cannot uh, run the project with the one of your senior developers on uh, sabbatical right so that is why option b is also incorrect let's look at option c review the resource management plan okay so let's park this option now because in our uh, these monthly connects we have discussed uh, in multiple occasions that uh, reviewing something before action is uh, important uh, however i would like to uh, highlight the nuance uh, in this scenario that uh, of course reviewing something is important but that something needs to be relevant and applicable to whatever you are reviewing okay but we'll come back to it in a second let's look at option d assess how the sabbatical will impact the project this option is also a good option because it is providing you an opportunity to build a case in terms of assessing and coming up with some figures or numbers which will substantiate that why you cannot do this project with your senior developer not being present okay so that is one of the reasons why option d looks like a more plausible option to me now it's a tie between option c and option d guys okay now why you should reject option c and why option c is incorrect is because of uh, this project artifact that is being referred to okay now of course reviewing something is important and you need to review um, a relevant document or a project artifact before acting however that project document or the project artifact needs to be the correct one right so in this scenario i would recommend that you open up your process group practice guide and go to page number 288 in your process group practice guide and study the components of resource management plan and you also go to page number 240 and study the components of team charter okay now if you do that you will be able to see that why resource management plan or let's say reviewing resource management plan is incorrect in this scenario because resource management plan doesn't give you the basic team ground rules or the way your team members should apply for holidays or the way in terms of your team members should cover each other if uh, some team member is not present etc etc those kind of things come in the team charter it does not come in the resource management plan okay so please go back and study these two pages where uh, there is a detailed discussion in terms of the components of team charter and resource management plan now i cannot display the screenshot here on this video because that's a copyrighted material and the intellectual property rights of pmi restricts me to share something which is copyrighted on a public forum however please go back to your process group practice guide and study the details of resource management plan and team charter okay and now you will see that why reviewing the resource management plan is incorrect here because that is a wrong artifact you are referring to probably if the option was review the team charter that might have been the correct option in that scenario because at that point in time reviewing the team charter might have provided you with some bit of uh, uh, let's say decision making ability in terms of identifying and understanding what were the team ground rules which were set when the project was chartered or when the project was going through the planning phase in terms of sabbaticals leaves holidays leave cover etc etc okay however even if you reviewed the resource management plan you will not be able to find anything related to these kind of uh, items in the resource management plan right and that is why option c is very close okay but incorrect so the correct answer to this question is option d which is to assess how the sabbatical will impact the project because that will provide you with the right data points or let's say the right kind of reasoning to go and negotiate with the functional manager or to negotiate with that person in terms of taking a decision whether that sabbatical would really impact your project or not okay so the correct answer is option d and now let's move on to question number 2 right so question number 2 guys please pause the video 
and read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. Right, so let's get started. The project manager of an R&D project is informed that the funding strategy for the project did not receive program approval. So an R&D project, which is a research and development project, is happening within a company. However, the project manager is being informed that the funding strategy for the project did not receive the program or the board approval, let's say. Okay. So the project is halfway through its initiation stage. Okay, very important line in the entire question. So the project has not moved on to the planning stage. It is still in the initiation stage. Okay, the direction from the PMO, which is the project management office, is to close the project. What should be the first action by the project manager? Again, note the word here, first action. It's not asking about the best course of action. It's a very fine nuance that I discuss often in my membership community. Okay, so if you wish, you can check out the daily posts on my membership community because I take similar examples and discuss such finer nuances that help you to select the correct answer from two very close answer choices. Okay, however, so coming back to this question, what should be the first action by the project manager? So let's look at the options one by one. Option A, review the communications management plan to inform all stakeholders. Uh, this is incorrect, right? Because... Of course, again, coming back to that review before act and review the right kind of artifact. Yes, you can review something, but how is communications management plan uh, suddenly uh, important here to inform all stakeholders? Of course, you can do that during a project closure process. However, is it the first action that you should take as the project manager? Okay, probably not, right? And we'll see in a second why option A is even more incorrect in regards to when we compare option A with the other options that are provided in this question. Okay, so let's look at option B. Work with procurement to close out all open contracts. This is incorrect because at the initiation stage, you do not have any open contracts. So you have not even moved to the procurement or let's say planning procurement or executing procurement stage. So there are no open contracts in the initiation stage. Option B is outrightly incorrect. Let's look at option C. Perform a sensitivity analysis to assess the risk impact of closing the project. Uh, this is a pointless exercise, okay? Your PMO, okay, your program board is asking you to close the project. Now, what vested interest you have as the project manager to include resources, uh, spend some time to perform sensitivity analysis and build a case to get the confidence of your project management office to make them believe that the project is important. Yeah, you can do that, but as a professional project manager, you should always uh, respect the hierarchy and respect the people who are in the PMO or in the program office who are taking some decisions. And uh, unless they have asked you to do a sensitivity analysis because that will involve resources, that will involve time, uh, there is no point of doing it. If the sponsor or let's say the program officer have asked you to close it, you might as well close it. Okay, so doing something uh, unnecessary does not uh, help in this kind of a situation. That is why option C is incorrect. Let's look at option D. Examine the organizational process assets for project closure guidelines. Yeah, this is something which is really important because you need to understand what are the guidelines of the company when a project is getting closed, what are the steps that needs to follow. And one of the steps could be to review the communications management plan to inform all the stakeholders. Now, note an important thing here, guys. The project is in the initiation stage, right? Is the communications plan available in the initiation stage? not right the communications plan is not available in the initiation stage at all it is available in the planning stage that is why you do not have a communications plan first thing okay now even if for argument's sake if i say that okay you will pull out some uh, learn from experience or organizational process assets of similar projects very far-fetched right and talk about that communication plan and use that communication plan to do that communication and inform all the stakeholders that is quite unnecessary however you can still do that but that does not precede the step of examining the organizational process assets for project closure guide. But that step does not precede the step of examining the organizational process assets for the project closure guidelines. So that is why the question has asked that what should be the first action by the project manager? And this is the first action by the project manager, which is to examine the OPAs for project closure guidelines. Option A is incorrect because communications management plan is not even available in the initiation stage. So it's a bit pointless. And secondly, even if you do a communication with the rest of the stakeholders, that should not be your first action, maybe second or third action. So that is why option A is also incorrect. So the correct answer to this question is option D. If you're liking the video, guys, please press the like button. 
your support goes a long way to help this channel grow. Also, your likes and comments help me to understand that you value such educational content on YouTube and motivates me to prepare more such videos like this to help you with your PNP exam preparation. And now, let's move on to question number three. Right, so question number three, guys. The drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's get started. After a series of focused group discussions or FGDs with the target audience, an NGO, which is a non-governmental organization, let's say a philanthropic organization, plans to roll out an application which will capture real-time data of school-going children within a locality. How is this an example of a customer-focused product delivery? Okay, so quite simple scenario. So there have been a series of FGDs or focus group discussions that has been conducted with the target audience uh, of school-going children. Now, logically, that might mean the teachers or let's say the parents of these children. And uh, an NGO is planning to roll out an application which will capture real-time data of the school-going children within our locality. Okay, so how is this an example of a customer-focused product delivery? So let's look at the options one by one. The application focused on uh, gathering user requirements via voice of customer. And that is why it is an example of a customer-focused product delivery. Okay, seems like a plausible option because uh, when you say voice of customer, it is a terminology of uh, agile or product driven delivery. And uh, when you have done uh, something called as a focus group discussion, it is uh, a tool which is used to uh, get the voice of customer or collect the user requirements. So yeah, that looks like a plausible option. Uh, however, let's hold it for now and review the other options and see if we are able to reject uh, the other options on solid grounds and with the correct reasoning, okay? Option B, the parents will receive monthly reports of school attendance totally random and totally incorrect. So this is basically giving you a feature of this application. However, it is not giving you the reason why this application is example of a customer focused product delivery. Now this monthly report might not be of any value to the parents, okay? Might be, okay? I'm not saying that it will be. However, the parent might have some other request or some other requirements. They don't even care of how to download the monthly school reports, okay? So you need to understand these finer nuances, right? So this option B is giving you a product feature that is not giving you the reason why it has been developed with the customer in mind, okay? It might be something that the NGO thought that it might be better to have something like this, okay? However, the FGD uh, did that give this requirement of having these monthly reports. We don't know. So that is why option B is incorrect. Let's look at option C. The teachers will be able to access developmental milestones for each student. Again, on the similar lines, but this time with the teachers, it is giving you a product feature which may or may not be valuable or relevant to the target group. Okay. So that is why option C is also incorrect. Let's look at option D. Number of school going children will increase within that locality. This is outright incorrect because it is uh, too much of an astronomical claim which cannot be justified or cannot be substantiated with any data or any reasoning, right? On what basis you are saying that developing this application will increase the number of school going children. Now you can do a lot of assumptions and still justify option D. However, as we have discussed in our monthly sessions that your focus as a PMP exam candidate should always be in terms of selecting the best possible option and not trying to fall in love with one option and trying to justify it by all means, right? So please be aware of this. Again, I discuss these kind of uh, fine nuances in my member community. So if you wish, you can check that out as well. However, coming back to this question, option D is incorrect, option C is also incorrect and option B is incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option A and option A is correct because uh, this is an example of customer focused product delivery. The reason being the application focused on gathering user requirements via voice of customer and uh, FGD is a correct tool which is used to collect uh, these kind of voice of customers to develop some user stories, etc, etc and so on and so forth, right? So the correct answer to this question is option A. If you are finding this practice sessions helpful guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel PMP with Ray for more such videos for your PMP exam preparation, okay? Subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me with extending the reach of this channel to other PMP aspirants like you. And now, let's move on to question number four. 
right so question number four guys please read the question and try to answer it the drill will remain the same you can pause the video here if you wish to so once you have tried to answer it yourself we can solve this together right so let's get started the end users of a product has not completed the required onboarding training on time okay in spite of the repeated follow-ups by the project manager and the product owner this poses a risk to the final product delivery since successful completion of the end user training is a key project deliverable okay what is the best course of action by the project manager note here that we are talking about the best course of action and uh, if i draw parallels to the previous questions that we have solved uh, many of them were uh, drawing references to the first step or the first course of action that needs to be done the question was not asking about the best course of action so, so there is a very thin line of difference right so let's look at the options one by one update the risk register and discuss this in the next uh, sprint review meeting okay let's hold this option for now you can say that okay uh, this situation that has happened that uh, the end users have not been able to complete the required onboarding training now you update the risk register and discuss it in the next sprint review meeting we'll see okay let's hold this option for now as of now uh, i'm not getting any strong reason to reject it uh, because i need to compare this with the other options so i'll park it for now let's look at option b update the risk register and develop a plan for timely completion okay this is also good because it's quite direct and providing you with uh, some kind of an action plan okay to, which is to develop a plan for timely completion of this onboarding training all right so let's hold this for now update the risk register and allocate post implementation support to mitigate risk okay that is incorrect okay because post implementation support will come with a cost it is not free right and uh, there is no reason to believe that your uh, project has enough risk buffers to support uh, the extra cost that will uh, be incurred due to this post implementation support and this is like sort of a damage control that you are trying to do that you are sort of communicating that you are sort of okay in terms of accepting incomplete project deliverable and you are trying to sort of uh, uh, cover it up with some post implementation support and uh, spending some money where it is not required okay so that is why it is a reactive approach uh, you should look as a project manager and in pmp style questions for a more proactive approach so that is why option c is incorrect let's look at option d update the risk register and modify the schedule to account for the delay this is outrightly incorrect right and i have talked this multiple times across multiple q a sessions that uh, modifying the schedule asking for extra budget escalating to sponsor these are like red flags okay so in 99.99 percent of the cases in your pmp exam these kind of options would be definitely incorrect okay mind that i have said 99.99 i have not said 100 percent. okay so there might be very very small cases where an escalation might be an option which you need to take okay? or for example where uh, increasing the project schedule or asking for extra time might be an option okay but those are very very rare scenarios and we'll deal with those on a case by case basis okay however this is definitely not correct in this scenario because accounting for the delay is a reactive approach and uh, this is not giving any indication to the client that as a project manager you have any control on your project so that is not something which you would like to have so option d is incorrect so let's look at option a and option b a bit more closely both of the options are suggesting to update the risk register which is okay however the point of differentiation here will be which action is giving you a more proactive uh, way of solving the problem so does postponing this issue for the next sprint review give you the confidence that this is a proactive approach or developing a plan for timely completion would give you the confidence that yes this is a proactive approach right and i think the answer is very evident that having a plan which will focus on what needs to be true to have a timely completion of this uh, onboarding training is something which should be in focus at this point in time for you as the project manager and if you are uh, just parking this issue to discuss it in the next sprint review meeting now that could be done however the sprint review meeting might be two weeks away and in the sprint review meeting you can have an action plan which will need like three weeks to implement so then how this is a proactive approach right this is uh, not a proactive approach in that scenario and in that sense so that is why option a is incorrect because it's a bit of a reactive approach and parking this issue for the next sprint review meeting does not make any sense right so the correct answer to this question is option b 
which is to update the risk register and develop a plan for timely completion of the onboarding training. Now, that can mean escalating to the functional managers of these people and asking them to intervene and making sure that onboarding training is complete, probably giving some kind of incentive to uh, these uh, end users uh, so that they can complete the training on time. Whatever needs to be true, that needs to happen, but at least you should have a plan which you can discuss or which you can suggest uh, with your executive or with your sponsor for a timely completion. And that gives a bit more confidence uh, to you as a project manager that at least you have taken something, some proactive approach uh, to uh, mitigate the issue which you are facing rather than being reactive and asking for more funds or asking for more time, etc., etc. Okay, so the correct answer is option B. I hope you are finding this exercise helpful, right? Remember, the target is to get all the five out of the five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is that you will get at least four out of the five questions correct, okay? So here comes the fifth and the final question. Right, so question number five, guys. Uh, the drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's get started. A hybrid project to improve a council's waste collection process combines the key deliverables with the small administrative tasks, okay? So there's a hybrid project that is happening in a council to improve the waste collection process and there is a set of key deliverables which are the big deliverables and uh, there is a set of small administrative tasks which are also, uh, let's say, important uh, but they are not the key deliverables, let's say, okay? An agile approach has been suitable to manage the key deliverables on time. So this is working fine. However, the small administrative task list is accumulating in the backlog. So this is something which is of concern, okay? Most of these tasks are quick and easy to complete. However, they are dependent on some external unpredictable events. All right, okay. So what is the question asking from us? It is asking that which approach would be most suitable in this scenario, okay? So it is asking us to select the right project management approach uh, given the scenario which is presented on the screen. Right, so let's look at the options one by one. Option A, combine the small administrative tasks in a predictive waterfall approach. Incorrect, okay? Because predictive waterfall approach cannot work in a situation where there are external unpredictability or unpredictable events because predictive or waterfall approach also needs a predictive or a stable environment, right? We all know this and that is why this is something which is uh, quite uh, counterintuitive and that is why option A is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option B. Refine the backlog to assign a set of small tasks as daily sprints. Okay, so what you are saying is uh, you will assign these uh, small tasks as uh, daily sprints. Okay, daily sprints, uh, it can happen in a very uh, special situation. Uh, let's hold this option for now. Let's look at the other options and uh, we'll see if we need to come back and uh, assess it a bit more. Let's look at option C. Refine the backlog on a daily basis and ensure that an external event-based prioritization is done. So basically, this is linking to this external unpredictable events. And what it is saying is you need to define the backlog on a daily basis, and which is this backlog, which is accumulating. And you need to ensure that uh, this backlog is prioritized based on this external event-based prioritization. So for example, if uh, on day one, uh, there is some kind of uh, uh, event that is expected to happen, then your backlog refinement should take that into account and you should keep the tasks in line with that prioritization. So that also looks like a good option to me. Let's look at option D. Perform a focus group discussion to brainstorm the best way to tackle this challenge. Okay, this is outrightly incorrect. Okay, firstly, focus group discussion is something as is something which is done for data collection. So it is generally not done in a problem solving situation. Also, you need to take into account the question stem, which is asking for the best project management approach, okay? Focus group discussion is not a project management approach. It's basically a tool, right, to apply something. Focus group discussions can be applied to predictive project management. Focus group discussions can be applied to hybrid. It can be applied to agile, okay? So it is not giving you the answer which the question is asking from you, okay? It is giving you something which might be true, but it's quite random and not linked to the actual question 
which is to identify the best approach which will be suitable in this scenario. So that is why option D is incorrect. So our tie is between option B and option C. Okay. Now, if you look at option B closely and compare it with option C, both of them are suggesting to refine the backlog, which is fine. Okay. Now, the first option, which is option B, is suggesting to refine the backlog and assign a small set of tasks as daily sprint. Okay. You can do that. Then what is the reason why the question body is having this phrase, which is however they are dependent on external unpredictable events. The reason why the question body is having this kind of a phrase is to help you, let's say, think intuitively that the answer option should have something which will take this problem into account and provide some solution. And that is what option C is suggesting that this kind of uh, external unpredictable event can be tackled with some event-based prioritization tool which you can use in terms of let's say probability impact metrics you know, so high probability high impact high probability medium impact etc etc at least some framework right some method to the badness so that is what the answer option is looking for so option c is the correct answer here option b is outrightly incorrect and the reason for that is even if you assign the small set of tasks at daily sprint, that might tackle half of your problem, which is accumulation of this backlog. So that might tackle this problem. However, it is incorrect because it is not able to tackle the second leg of the problem, which is the rest of the 50% of the challenge that you are facing, that your small tasks are dependent on external unpredictable events. Okay, And that is why it's incorrect. And the correct answer to this question is option C which not only tackles the accumulation of backlog issue, but also tackles the issue of having some unpredictable events in the scenario, which you are tackling with some tool of external event-based prioritization. Now, the tool can be uh, sensitivity analysis, tool can be probability impact metrics, uh, tool can be risk prioritization numbering, whatever tool you want to, you can use, but that is immaterial as long as the principle and the intent stays the same, which is to have some sort of external event-based prioritization. So the correct answer is option C. So that's the end of the quiz, guys. Let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score. I'd be very interested to know that. Also, if you have scored less, do not get demotivated, okay? You just need a bit more practice and a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps. Now, to help you practice more, and eventually get better, I am linking here the entire playlist of our monthly practice sessions for the PMP exam questions and answers. Please check if you have missed any of the monthly sessions and make sure you practice with me in those sessions as well. I'll see you there. I'll see you again in the next video from this playlist.